All right, so in this video, we're going to be talking about the scalar projection and the vector projection. Okay, so to, to start off, the, the scalar projection and the vector projection have a lot of applications in physics and engineering, and there's something that we can find using the dot product. Okay, so uh, that's kind of where this comes in. Now, first off, we need to talk about what is the vector projection and what is the scalar projection. As far as what is the vector projection, well, basically, it starts out like this. If we project vector B onto vector A, as shown, so you see I have vector B here, vector A here, and I projected vector B onto vector A by just basically, you can kind of think of it as B casting its shadow on A, okay? So then you get this blue vector here, the projection, it's, it's, it's called the projection of B onto A. All right, and that right there is the vector projection. Okay, you can kind of think of it in, in this scenario as the x component of b. Real quick, as far as this notation goes, okay, how you can remember that? Well, it's the projection of b onto a. Okay, so b is going on top of a. That's kind of how you can kind of uh, think of it. All right, all right. So now on to the scalar projection. Okay, this is also known as the component of b along a. Okay. So you'll see a formula for a second there, and that'll make sense why we're why I'm mentioning this. And the scalar projection is basically plus or minus the magnitude of the projection of B onto A. Okay? Now the projection of B onto A is a vector, right? It's a vector projection. And what vector is it? Well, it's this vector right here. Okay? Now you're all all you do for the scalar projection, take the magnitude of it, and then it's plus or minus. Okay? And that plus or minus, wh wh whether it's plus or it's going to be minus, is given by whether the projection points in the same or the opposite direction as A. Okay, so for instance, if your B didn't go this way, let's say that it went this way, okay? And then you end up with something like, let's actually just draw it out here. You end up with something down here where your projection points in the opposite way. Okay, well then you're going to have a negative here. All right, so that's the idea because it's pointing in the opposite direction as A. All right, so now we're going to be actually getting into some formulas here, okay? We know that cosine of theta equals A dot B over the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B, okay? That's something we learned when we first started talking about the dot product. Now, we're also going to say that the component of B onto A equals the magnitude of B times cosine theta, all right? And where am I getting that from? Well, remember that the magnitude of this vector is going to be the uh, component of B onto A, all right? So keep that in mind. We also know that cosine of theta equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse side, all right? Now, what is the adjacent side? Well, the adjacent side Okay. That's well, the length of the adjacent side, that's kind of what we're talking about here, is the magnitude of the projection, which is the component. Okay, So it's the component of B onto A. All right, that's all. And then it's going to be over the hypotenuse. What's the hypotenuse? Remember, it's the length, not the vector. So that's going to be the magnitude of vector B. So if we multiply by the magnitude of B on both sides, what we get is exactly this, all right? So now what we can say from that is that, well, if we multiply by the magnitude of B on both sides, we get the magnitude of B times cosine theta, all right? And well, now we can set these two things equal. The component of B onto A is equal to the dot product over the magnitude of A. Okay, so there's your formula for the component. Okay, the component is equal to A dot B over the magnitude of A. That's your first formula. Next, we have the projection of B onto A. Okay, and 
the projection, how do we get to the projection from the component? Well, the projection is just that vector that's representing the component. So what we can do is multiply by a unit vector. Okay, if we're multiplying by a unit vector, we're not changing the magnitude at all, okay, because the, a unit vector has the length of one. Okay, if you haven't seen my, my video explaining uh, unit vectors, definitely go check that out. Okay, because this is a big thing here. We're going to multiply a dot b over the magnitude of a by a unit vector. Okay, so we're multiplying this by the uh, just just the vector a over the magnitude of a. That's a unit vector. Okay, that's the unit vector for a. All right. Now, by doing that, we're now giving we're now making this a vector because we're giving it direction. Okay, now it's not just a scalar, it's a vector because this unit vector is simply just giving it direction. It's not changing the length. All right, so when you multiply those two things through, you get that the projection of B onto A is equal to A dot B over the magnitude of A squared, and that's gonna be multiplied by the vector a okay and this isn't like a dot or, or anything like that okay this is just going to be a scalar okay the dot product is a scalar and below here you're getting the magnitude squared which is just going to be a scalar so this is just scalar multiplication okay that's why you don't need like a dot or anything like that there okay so there's your component there's your projection we're going to do one quick example and that's going to be it for the video so we want to find the scalar and vector projections of we have vector b is going to be 2 1 3 and vector a is going to be negative 1 comma 4 comma 2 so now we want to find first let's we're going to find the component of b on a and that's going to be equal to the dot product over the magnitude of a okay we've done that so how do we do this well let's first find the dot product okay that's a great place to start that's half of our equation. A dot B is going to equal, we have negative one comma four comma two dot two comma one comma three. Okay, when you do that dot product out, you get negative one times two is negative two plus four times one is four plus two times three is six and that gives you an eight. Okay, so you get that your dot product is 8, and then you need to find the magnitude of A. So finding the magnitude of A, that's going to be just the distance formula, right? We're going to have just each of our components squared, and we're going to add them up. So we get a negative 1 squared, write that negative 1 squared, plus 4 squared, plus 2 squared, which is going to equal, uh, this is going to be a 1 plus 16, which is 17 plus four, which is going to be 21. So now you get that your component of B onto A is equal to the dot product, eight, over the magnitude, 21, well, rad 21. Okay, there you go. Now this is representing just, it's just the component, okay? It's the component when you put B onto A, all right? It's the magnitude of the, the, proje the vector projection, okay? So, if this is the magnitude, now we can find the actual vector itself by multiplying by a unit vector, okay? And so what we're gonna do is use the formula a dot b over the magnitude of a squared times vector a. Okay, that is really crooked. All right, so all we have to do now Let's first start off by squaring the bottom, okay? Because now it's the magnitude of A squared. So we're gonna get that the projection of A onto B is equal to eight, that eight is still the dot product, over 21, not rad 21 because we're squaring it, times the vector, negative one comma four comma two. Okay, so this is just scalar multiplication, okay? so. Multiply this through, you get negative eight over 21, comma, 
this is going to be 32 over 21 and then you get 16 over 21 and don't forget your angle brackets and that right there is your projection vector so that's going to about do it for this one now this is actually something that i did have some trouble with at first okay um I wasn't sure what the scalar and the vector projections were actually telling me. I just knew to use the formulas and that's it. Okay. So, you know, using the formulas is no big deal, but I wanted to find out actually what they meant. And that's why I led with that for this video. I showed you what the scalar and the vector projections actually are. Okay. So now hopefully these formulas are a lot easier to just know by heart because now you understand where they came from. All right, so hopefully this video helped you and uh, that's gonna do it for this video. So if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for vectors and the geometry of space in the next video in the series. Lastly, if these videos are really helping you and you would like to consider supporting me, I have my Patreon linked in the description down below, along with some other pretty cool links that you should definitely check out. See you soon.